Why do I have flaky skin on my face and how to get rid of it? These are questions we're going to take a stab at addressing in today's video. Our skin normally sheds dead cells on a daily basis. That's something that you don't really see with your eyes and it's a perfectly normal part of how skin works and skin biology. Your skin is a barrier that protects you from the outside world and it also functions to keep water in among other things like regulating your body temperature. The outermost layer of your skin, you can think of as a brick wall where the bricks are little shells of former cells and they're called corneocytes. These corneocytes are stuck together in a lipid matrix that's sort of like the mortar between the bricks of a brick wall. Now, the topmost part of that brick wall, it sheds on a daily basis, and that's something that you don't see with your eyes. However, when the normal processes of shedding are disrupted as a result of things we're gonna talk about in this video, what you end up getting is corneocytes clumping together in sheets that look like big scales and give the skin a rough, coarse textured appearance and then flake off. And that's something that you actually see with your eyes in the formation of flakes. The normal shedding of those cells is not something that you typically see with your eyes. And in order for that to be occurring as it normally should and as it does in otherwise healthy non-flaky skin, what is critical, and keep this in mind, what is critical is actually water. Water content in that outermost layer is important for the normal shedding processes to ensue. Your skin actually produces a variety of substances in that outermost layer that are intended to hold onto water. These are referred to as natural moisturizing factors, and a lot of them we have talked about on this channel in various videos. They include lactic acid and urea. They also include a variety of amino acids and amino acid derivatives. There are also a variety of sugars. All of these natural moisturizing factors together, they are hygroscopic, they are water loving, and they really basically function to hold on to water there so that the processes of normal shedding can ensue properly. The amino acid portion of natural moisturizing factor derives from the breakdown of a protein called filaggrin. And I'm going to explain to you later on in this video why that is so important for understanding why you might have flaky skin on the face and what to do about it. There are a lot of different things that can lead to disruption in the normal shedding and desquamation. Number one thing that you may not realize is actually related to your environment. We see this a lot in the colder winter months, and it's very simple. You are existing somewhere where there's not good water content in the atmosphere. This is most notable in the winter months when we turn on the heaters and the ambient humidity drops. You can experience what is called a winter itch, dry skin with flakiness that then becomes itchy. Very, very common. In order to rectify this situation, a simple remedy is to run a humidifier in your bedroom at night when you sleep to improve the moisture content in the air. When we sleep at night, our skin is prone to losing more water, so that's a good time to be running the humidifier to help offset water loss as it relates to low ambient humidity. With age, once you get into your older adult years, barrier function of your skin starts to decline. Those proteins that are necessary for barrier function, you don't make them as robustly. Lipid content in your skin, which is essential for that watertight seal, the lipid production starts to decline as well. This happens in both men and women. Women really feel the brunt of this, however, as they go through menopause. With menopause, our skin is no longer seeing that estrogen. With age, you produce less filaggrin. Remember, filaggrin is that key protein that gets broken down and becomes a natural moisturizing factor for retaining water. You make less of that. With age, you also get thinning of the top part of the skin, the epidermis. So these things together combine to make the skin a lot more vulnerable to water loss, dryness, and the formation of flakes by virtue of abnormal desquamation because again, you have a decline in factors being produced in the skin that keep that water content optimized. How do you go about addressing dry skin with age? You may need to change up 
your skincare habits, the skincare products that you choose, and your bathing practices, especially as you become an older adult. Older adults find oftentimes that they don't need to bathe as frequently as they once did. Sweat production declines, your skin again is more vulnerable to water loss that comes about with bathing. So you may have been someone who routinely bathed on a daily basis. When you become an older adult, you may only need to bathe every other day, especially if you're not particularly active, you don't spend a lot of time outdoors. Moisturizers with urea can definitely help in improving moisture retention in the skin. And also moisturizers with ceramides may help improve your skin's production of its own ceramides, which are key components in the skin barrier that ultimately help allow for proper barrier function and the desquamation process to ensue appropriately. Flakiness on the face can also happen no matter your age as a result of things that are coming in contact with your skin. It's called a contact dermatitis. Either something comes in contact with your skin that is irritating, especially with cumulative exposure. Like for example, maybe you're using a skincare product that is kind of irritating and you use it every single day, multiple times a day, and your skin really can't handle it. It becomes irritated. And then the skin uh, turnover processes kind of get a little messed up and you get the formation of flaky skin. Alternatively, you can also develop a contact dermatitis as a result of an allergy. You become allergic to an ingredient in either a skincare product or a hair care product like a shampoo, for example. A lot of people will develop flakes on their face because they're allergic to ingredients in their shampoo as they get run off of the shampoo when they're rinsing it out. That can um, lead to flaky skin along the hairline, the sides of the face, behind the ears, and on the neck. Not just skincare and hair care and cosmetic products, however, but a lot of people out there are allergic to nickel. And nickel is something that you come in contact with a lot in your day-to-day -day lives. For example, touching keys and then you touch your face, or maybe you hold a paper clip in your mouth and you develop flakes around the mouth or on the lips, chap lips. You can become allergic to anything in your environment that comes in contact with the skin. And nickel is just a very common contact allergen, but there are many others out there. So don't just laser focus on a skincare product as a potential culprit. It could be any um, of a number of things in your environment, workplace, etc. One of the go-to recommendations is to really, really streamline and simplify your routine and just eliminate all unnecessary noise in your skincare routine that includes serums and just stick to a very bland cleanser and a very bland moisturizer and sunscreen. Um, check out my video on how to do a skincare reset. I go over this in detail, including products to choose when you are going through a skincare reset. I will link that video in the description box. I lay it out for you there how to do it. It really can help calm things down as you get to figuring out what the root cause of the contact dermatitis is. We cannot have a conversation about flakes without talking about the flaky skin condition, seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff, they are kind of the same condition on a spectrum. Dandruff you think of as the flakes in your scalp, but seborrheic dermatitis can happen honestly anywhere on the body where you have hair follicles, but most often happens on the face. It's an inflammatory response to the yeast that lives on everyone's skin, coupled with excessive oil production and a problem with skin barrier turnover, leading to the formation of flakes. In the scalp, you get those dry white flakes, but on the face, for example, you will often get yellowish, almost greasy appearing flakes. Now, how do you go about rectifying this condition? There's no cure for it. D different things can trigger it, including stress, getting sick, run down, your immune system being suppressed, maybe related to a medication. Um, it often can flare in the winter time as well, maybe because you know a lot of people are wearing more hats. Hats create for a moist, humid environment up close to the scalp, which favors malassezia yeast overgrowth and more inflammation in response to that. If you have seborrheic dermatitis on your face, using a salicylic acid facial cleanser can help control the flakes and the inflammation as tolerated. There are also anti-dandruff shampoos that can be lathered to the affected areas on the face left on the skin for roughly five minutes and then rinsed off. The anti-dandruff ingredients either tackle that little yeast or they help to calm down the inflammation or some combination of the above. 
The other option for controlling seborrheic dermatitis on the face is an antifungal cream that could be prescribed to you. There are also anti-inflammatory creams like steroid creams, topical calcineurin inhibitors like pimcrolimus and tacrolimus, otherwise known as Elidil and Protopic. These things may be prescribed to you by your treating dermatologist. People who have a deeper skin tone, when they develop seborrheic dermatitis, it looks much, much different. Yes, they can have the flakiness, but oftentimes people who have seborrheic dermatitis, who have a deeper skin tone, it often takes away the color in their skin. Albeit it's temporary, um, it can lead to lightening of the skin. So if you are getting flakiness and then you're getting white, uh, lighter patches around the nose or in the forehead area, around the eyebrows, it could be seborrheic dermatitis. Now a condition that can kind of look like seborrheic dermatitis is a bit similar, but is actually very different is psoriasis. Psoriasis is a chronic inflammatory condition that actually impacts the whole person, not just the skin. It has impacts on your total body health. It can cause problems with your joints, puts you at an increased risk for heart disease. Check out my videos on psoriasis. But the hallmark lesions of, the skin lesions of psoriasis are these very well demarcated red, scaly, flaky patches. Psoriasis is a abnormal immune reaction in the skin coupled with a problem with how the skin cells are turning over. They do so way too rapidly and that leads to these thickened, they're called plaques, that have this very characteristic thick white scale. Now, if you have psoriasis, don't go at it alone. This is not something that you're going to be able to eliminate of your own accord without the help of your treating dermatologist. Things that can help control psoriasis in the skin um, include topical salicylic acid to thin out some of that scaliness. You also have uh, prescription steroid ointments and creams, lotions, topical prescription steroids can calm down the inflammation. You also have a class of medications known as vitamin D analogs like calcipatriene that can help modulate the barrier turnover process as well as the inflammation. Steroids can also be injected directly into the skin to suppress the psoriasis response there and make those spots go away. There are so many new medications for psoriasis out there that I'm not gonna go into detail on in this video, but discuss with your dermatologist, you may be a candidate for these. They're called biologics and they address the specific aspects of the immune abnormalities in the skin of people who have psoriasis. My number one tip is do not pick at the flakes, do not scratch and try and sand away at that. Psoriasis is an inflammatory condition that exhibits something called the isomorphic response. And what that means is anywhere where you have trauma, excessive friction on the skin, it can elicit more psoriasis to come out. So what will end up happening is that you pick, 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 and that's actually bringing more psoriasis into the skin. So you don't wanna do that. We're getting into the colder months where people are not spending as much time outdoors in the sun, but during the summer months for sure, or you know, maybe you go on a beach vacation, if you, God forbid, sustain a sunburn several days after the fat, your skin will start to peel off. Whatever you do, do not try and pick off the peeling skin. When you get a sunburn, the skin is wounded and trying to peel off the, the skin is like kicking yourself while you're down. Just don't do it. Be very gentle with your skincare. Stay out of the sun if you get a sunburn so that your skin can heal. Take uh, soothing baths and colloidal oatmeal. It'll help hydrate the skin, soothe it, and help support barrier recovery. Check out my video on how to treat a sunburn. I give a heck of a lot more tips in there than I have time to cover in this video. Now, we can have a discussion about barrier problems, problems with desquamation, without talking about atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis is a type of eczema, and it's a skin condition where the person has a problem with their skin barrier, so they're more prone to losing water. Um, atopic dermatitis, like psoriasis, is a chronic skin condition. There's no cure for it. Now, with atopic dermatitis, it can kind of burn out, go away, but sometimes it'll come back. Everyone has their own triggers, but the root cause or one of the root causes, main issues is a problem with the skin barrier. It loses water too, too easily. Because it loses water too easily, the normal desquamation process can go awry and you can get flaky skin. When you have atopic dermatitis, you want to avoid triggers 
like dust mites, pollens, arrow allergens. I always tell people this, but when you go outside and you know, you're enjoying the day, especially a day that's, you know, the flowers are blooming. When you come inside, take your clothes off. Don't go sit on your bed in those clothes because you're going to transfer pollen to your bedding. And then that those arrow allergens can really, you know, get on your skin, continue to be exposed to your skin and rev up the atopic dermatitis, the barrier issue, the water loss worsens, and you know, you can get flaky itchy skin. Bathing is a very important part of managing atopic dermatitis, but you want to make sure that you bathe in lukewarm to cool water, not super hot, and that you use very mild cleansers. Um, you don't use harsh soaps, and you want to make sure that you are moisturizing. Consistent moisturizing is a mainstay for managing atopic dermatitis and preventing those flakes because the root problem is an issue with the skin barrier and making it so that you lose water more readily. All right, y'all, so that is what I wanted to talk about in today's video, flaky skin. This video hopefully leaves you with some understanding of why flakes form in the first place, and a lot of people are under the misconception that if you have flaky skin, the best course of action is to try and exfoliate it away. And that's not really what you want to do in most cases because what you end up doing by over exfoliating is further impairing the skin barrier, leading to more water loss, which is already the root issue in the majority of cases is deficient water dehydration, if you will, of the stratum corneum. So by attempting to exfoliate that stuff, you're really just aggravating the process of the flake formation in the first place. So I hope this video um, in explaining the different conditions with flakes, again, not an exhaustive review by any means, but it gives you some understanding of why they form, why they form in different conditions, and how to go about addressing flakes I hope this was informative. On the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video all about why you have dull skin. So check that one out. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.